Today we are joined by Adam Dombey at the College of Charleston in South Carolina and a proud graduate of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And he is today talking to us about the false cause, his new book with the University of Virginia Press. So Adam, to start and break the ice, how did you get interested in the topic of Silent Sam and Confederate monuments? It's a, it's a really good question. And it's, uh, it was kind of accidental, to be honest. I was a, um, a graduate student in my first year of graduate school. So let any, any graduate students watching this should know that uh, those term papers that you think are dead ends may not be dead ends. Um, and I was taking a class oh. on monuments and memory. And I thought, oh, it'll be an easy way to write this paper. I'll just research the local monument. Um, and, and that'll be fun. And I said, I want to look at the dedication speeches. And I found most of them in the newspaper, but there was one that was missing. Julian Carr just mentioned Julian Carr gave a speech as well. And I thought, oh, I should look that one up. And I noticed that the Julian Carr papers were in the archives. And so I went to the archives and I knew the date of the speech. The folders were by date. So I went directly to that folder. I pulled that folder out and there the speech was wait, that wait, would, wait. Um, would later lead me to write this book. And so what happened is I, I read the speech and I was shocked. I actually, it's one of those moments when you're in the archives and you're like, holy cow, am I reading this right? And I actually went out and grabbed the archivist. <clears throat> um, and Laura was the archivist and Matt Turry, uh, Laura Brown and Matt Turry were uh, outside and I went out and grabbed him. I was like, come, come, come see this and tell me if I'm, crazy. They'd never seen it before, uh, even though they worked there. Um, and so we, so at, at the time, I didn't really know what to do with that. I wrote a paper for my semester. I told a few people, but then I didn't really mess with it until, as always happened at, the, at UNC, every couple of years, there was a letter to the editor, it seems like, saying that this was a monument to slavery. This was a monument uh, to racism. It should be taken down. And inevitably, there was someone who replied that said the Civil War wasn't about slavery, or this was a monument to men's honor. And I, there was a couple of these letters that came out. And I thought, you know, this is a chance to teach people about Jim Crow. I was really naive about sort of what would happen next. I thought this was a chance to teach people about Jim Crow. That was my dream. Uh, I thought maybe we'll put up a historic sign for it. And I said, uh, I'll publish this letter just saying, here's what they said. And I published that letter and I thought that I was done with that project. Um, and and I, I didn't think I'd, I'd see it again because my dissertation topic was what I was working on at the time. And activists sort of latched onto that letter and realized, or that, that speech, they latched onto that speech and realized that this was a speech that could really shift the debate. And they, they went and stood outside by the monument and talked to people. They wrote poems, they wrote op-eds, they talked to reporters, um, they talked to politicians, they talked to faculty, and they really educated the community in a way that even the history department did. And when I first, um, in 2011, 2012, when I first sort of the speech sort of came on the scene because I, I put it out there, I guess, and then activists took it and ran with it. Um, no faculty member was talking about removing Silent Sam except for one, um, Ger uh, who was but actually left by then. Um, and so if you go to the history department, they were, by the time the monument was torn down, over 10 departments had called for its removal. Um, and so you see the shift, right, in public opinion. And it was this shift in public opinion and this activism that, uh, along with a few other events, led me to realize that my dissertation book was less important at this moment in history right. um, as a book on white supremacy and lies. And so when the combination of these sort of activists making such progress um, sort of woke me up to like, all right, this research matters, right? This is research mm -hmm. that I didn't realize how much it matters until they made me realize it. And this is a story that needs to be told. Um, and at the same time, we also had, you know, in 2015, I moved to Charleston right after um, the Mother Manual terrorist attack. And there you had, you know, distorted history justifying racial violence. Yeah. And then in 2016, the election of Donald Trump. And then in 2017, of course, you had um, Charlottesville, right? And so by 2016, really, and uh, I sort of, by, by late 2016, I decided this would be book number two. Uh, for me. This was going to be my next book. And, and after the election of Donald Trump, I said, all right, I'm going to push this one up. This is going to be the, the first book. And, and it's funny because it was originally, this seemed like it was a distinct project from the second half of the book on 
that deals with, and I'm sure we'll talk about later, things like pension fraud. And it was only later as I started sort of writing them as separate articles that I realized actually this is the same story um, and they go together. And that this is not just, these are, these are two different sets of lies coming together for the same purpose. The activists sort of showed me that this was something that mattered at the same time that I sort of stumbled onto pension fraud going on that, uh, and realized that nobody had written about pension fraud yet and that this was a chance. And then I realized, I thought, you know, pension fraud and monuments, these have nothing to do to each other. And as I started sort of researching it and writing what was originally going to be separate articles, I realized, you know, this is, this is actually, this is a book. This is a, uh, yeah. uh, these yeah. are the same, these are two parts of the same story. Um, so that's how I came to it. It was, it was accidental. It was not on purpose. And, um, and it, and it's, it's, it's a tribute, I think, to the activists' uh, efforts to highlight this story that led me to realize that this was something that needed to be written first.